form is only useful if you're able to submit it somewhere. In this video, we'll learn how to create submit buttons. We're going to focus on two elements that can sometimes get confused with one another. The first one is called input, and we'll go ahead and type it out. And it looks just like that, and as you can see, input is a self-closing tag. Now, just like the other form elements, there are many attributes that we can apply to the input element. So we'll go ahead and use the type attribute. And there's a lot of things that we could do here, but first we'll go ahead and just type text. And when we switch back to our browser and refresh the page, you can see that we now have an input element where we can put in text, just like that. We could also change the type to be password instead of text. And we'll go ahead and refresh the page there. And now when we type text into the box, it will be blanked out. Using the password type doesn't make a form secure. Server-side security is an entirely different topic that I won't go into here. However, using the password type, you can at least obscure a password being typed in from potential onlookers that might be looking over your shoulder, or watching you fill out a form on a projector while you give a demonstration. Now, we'll go ahead and switch back to our text editor, and we'll change this password type back to text, and we're going to use another input type called submit. And we'll go ahead and self-close that tag there. And we'll switch back to our browser and refresh, and now, we can go ahead and type things into our form, and we can hit submit, and they will be submitted to our URL, which in this case is just a hash. Now one thing I'd like to note before I go any further is that we're using the native styling here. You can see that I'm using Chrome on Mac OS X, and so I get these nice aqua buttons. But if you're on another operating system like Windows, your form elements might look slightly different. Now there's another input type that I'd like to show you, and that is called reset. So we'll go ahead and type out another input element, give it our type attribute, and set the value to reset. And we need to self-close that tag there, and when we switch back to the browser and refresh, sometimes if you try to refresh a page after you've submitted a form, a warning will come up from your browser asking if you'd like to resubmit the form. This is just there so that you don't submit forms twice by mistake. For example, if you were entering in your credit card data to purchase something, you wouldn't want to submit the form twice because it might put in two orders and double charge you. That's not good. However, when you're developing, you shouldn't normally have to worry about this. If it comes up, just go ahead and click the affirmative continue or OK. If it is something that you're worried about, just try re-entering the URL into the address bar of your browser. So now we have this reset button, and when we go ahead and type in information into our form, we can click reset, and the reset button will clear it, just like that. So I said we were going to learn about two elements that are often confused with one another. The second element we're going to learn about is called button, and we'll go ahead and type that in, and we'll call this one my button, and we'll go ahead and close it with a closing tag, just like that. And we'll go ahead and switch back to the browser and refresh, and we'll hit continue, and there you can see we now have my button which doesn't do anything at all. So we just learned how to use the input element to make buttons. What is this button element? Well, buttons are typically used when you need just that, a button. This can be useful when you need a button to fire a JavaScript event that changes something on the page in real time, rather than actually submitting the form. Buttons are also useful because you have a little bit more control over how you can style them whereas input submit buttons are a bit more strict. If you want to submit a form using a button element, just set it to type submit. Now, we won't really be using the button element in this video series, 
but for now, you just need to know that it exists. Now that we've learned about text inputs and buttons, we're ready to move on to checkboxes and radio buttons.